Okay, Zappo, the NFL draft happened last week, and the Patriots yep. had a pretty good success. Very solid, very solid. I give them an yep. A minus. Yep, I, I would give them an A. They, uh, they, they addressed their needs. Yeah, they had a questionable pick, but I, think, I, I like... I think their late round picks were a little questionable. Maybe not one of them, but we'll get to it. I, I, I liked it. We'll get to it. Okay. So, so let's start off by saying the Patriots originally had the 27th and the 31st pick in the first round. Yep. Two second rounders, a yep. third and a fourth. Mm-hmm. That changed a lot. Mm-hmm. So with our first pick, we moved up from our 27th and we gave a third rounder to go up to 21 and pick Chandler Jones. Defensive end. Defensive end from Syracuse. You have any opinions on uh, Chandler? I I like Chandler Jones a lot. I think he's a great fit for our system. Uh, he plays D end, outside linebacker, um, hand up, hand down, which is good for a, a system like ours because we do a lot of sub packages, so he can be used in both ways. And I think that's what we really need right now is a, a, a solid outside rush, a young guy that can really help us out right away. And I believe Chandler Jones can do that. A lot of people question that uh, if he's right for this pick. Some people say his production was down uh, in the senior year. But I think main I think we people need to really avoid that. Um, you know he he didn't have a solid season. He missed the first few games. Uh, he had an injured knee. leg. Yep. And he came back from that perfectly fine now. No need for worry. Mm-hmm. Um, got four and a half sacks in the remaining games he played, which is not bad. You know it's hard to get sacks in a, in in football. Um, so it's a pretty good number. And I think that he's going to be a really solid contributor for us. Um, it may, may take him a few years to get to a really elite level, but, you know, it's like that with every player, really. Yeah. Jones is around uh, 6'5", 247, which is kind beautiful of... Beautiful size. It's Great kind size. of light for a defensive it's end. It's light, but, but he has the perfect but long arms, tall he, body. He's kind of the new generation of defensive ends, which are lighter but quicker. Mm-hmm. Jones is kind of known for his athleticism. To, he still needs to bulk up, I think, mm-hmm. though. It's, he can bulk up. He but really he, he, he's got long arms. He's very fast, very athletic. So he's very good at getting off the tackles quick, getting off the blocks quick, getting to the quarterback and sacking them. Yep, very good, good pick. Good, very good pass rusher. So with the 31st pick in our fourth rounder, we moved up 25 oh, wow. to get Dante Hightower, a linebacker from Alabama. Hightower, again, one of those very versatile guys. He's listed as an inside linebacker. But, you know, with a guy like Bill Belichick, um, this guy can move to outside linebacker, can move stay at inside, or even move to defensive end on some points. Uh, Hightower, very quick, amazing pass rush at linebacker. Mm-hmm. Um, very um, familiar with the, the NFL system, playing under Nick Saban at uh, Alabama. And they use a lot of sub-packed NFL-style formations. So I think that he's got a leg up in the competition here. Alabama is a very fun college team to watch. It's one of the few I do between them and Michigan. And uh, Alabama, like, they had four first-rounders mm-hmm. go in the – and it was – I think Hightower is the centerpiece of that defensive group. And yep. I think he will be a key to our pass rush and our linebacking core. I Yeah, I mean, you know, with all the sub-packages we have, there really is no definition to our linebacking core. There's a lot of different things about it. And I think Hightower is good because he can play all the positions and he can he can certainly rush the passer. So, I mean, it's I'm interested to see how Belichick will actually use him because, you know, I saw a lot last year in the preseason where they experimented a lot with the new defense and a lot of middle linebacker blitzing, which I thought was interesting. If we stay with our 3-4 root defense, you know, I can see Mayo and Hightower in the middle, Spikes on the outside, you know, Ninkovic on the other side, possibly Jake Beckett, who we'll talk about later. Um, but... It's a very good core of linebackers, and I think it'll be a force in the coming year. Uh, I think Hightower, um, was, he's very versatile. So if we go from a 4-3 or we stay in a 3-4, whoever we choose, I think Hightower will be able to adapt and play, uh, play wherever we want him to play. Bill Belichick, that's one of the few <coughs> things he looks for in a player. He looks for, one, their potential, their versatility and their skill level of course but uh I, I think it's good news that bill belichick moved up and tried to pick him he might he has to see something really special in these players you know he's not he hasn't moved up in nine years and this yeah. is i think this is the time where he really had to yeah i, I like hightower i think i i love the potential of chandler jones but i think hightower has the most immediate superstar potential mm-hmm. and he will make the most difference next year yep so moving on second round 
This we is stay, why we stay our with our first pick in the second round and pick Tavon Wilson, a free this safety why, from this Illinois. This is why I gave the Patriots a low grade. Picking Tavon Wilson, a very low-ranked safety. I didn't know who he was. Mel Kuyper didn't know who he was. Two-year starter out of Illinois, fighting Illini, and he projected to be undrafted, but the Patriots took a risk with him in the second round. And I, I don't, I don't know what Bill Belichick is thinking. Really, it's you know you're passing up guys like Brandon Taylor. Uh, you got Ioka out of uh, Boise State, Markel Martin out of Oklahoma State. You know, it's definitely it's questionable. I think, but uh, seeing a lot of writing and a lot about this guy, he's a very Hard, he's a very hard worker. He's only started two years at Illinois. Um, he played cornerback and safety, so you know you see more versatility here. Yeah. And he's a very solid tackler, which mm. I don't know. I, I have to see how the Patriots are going to use him. If they want him at a free safety, I don't know. It's it's interesting because you know a better tackler would usually stay at a strong safety and not much of a coverage guy. Scouts Inc. rated him as the 24th best safety in the draft. And... Uh, who was considered the best, Mark Barron, first overall rated. He was drafted very early on. And then uh, uh, Harrison Smith out of Notre Dame, he was drafted around uh, the second to last pick of the first round. I love uh, Brandon Taylor. I think he had a very solid career at LSU. He was the third-ranked safety on the board. And he was still available at this pick, which kind of makes it a head-scratcher for me. I don't know what Bill Belichick sees on Tavon yet. We probably will move him around. It seems like he's pretty versatile. Uh, but this is something where I want to be wrong about him. I want to see how he'll produce next year. I have trouble seeing him not being cut by the team since we used the second round mm. on him. I, I think he could have easily gone undrafted and we could have picked him up as an unsigned free agent. So that that is confusing for me. But I think I think we'll see. I This is a bold prediction here, but I think we'll see Tavon Wilson in our starting lineup in a few years. Yeah. I think he has the skills to develop on, and I think Bill Belichick will take advantage of that. Okay, moving to the third round, which we uh, traded our second second round pick to get. We pick up Jake Beckett, a defensive end from Arkansas. Any thoughts? I, I really like this guy. High motor, um, captain from Arkansas. Play He can play outside linebacker, but I think he's more suited to play DN. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Bill Belichick will do whatever the hell he wants with him. And, but you know, he's very excited to be a Patriot. I think this would be a good value in the years to come. He's very, I think he's a very raw talent right now. Yeah, I, um, he's the second defensive end which we picked up after Jones. And uh, he's kind of a little bit different than Jones in the fact that he isn't as athletic as Jones is, but he kind of makes that up for his sheer power and strength. I, I could see him being a situational contributor and uh having a growing role in the years to come. So we also uh, traded into the sixth round and uh, picked up Nate Ebner, a defensive back from Ohio State. My yeah. favorite. My favorite pick in the draft. Um, Nate Ebner only playing two years of football at Ohio State his junior and senior year. Freshman and sophomore year, he was a rugby star. Mm. And this guy, I was watching his rugby tape, and man, he can... He's a beast. He can fly. And what I like about him is his... He can. He starts from a slow jog, and all of a sudden, he's he's running downfield faster than any player that's out there. And he, his acceleration is just amazing. He he was able to tackle those players on the rugby field. Like he and used his whole body if, and yeah, just got you, at if them. If you miss the if you miss the tackle in the initial attack, he'd switch his feet and chase him down and get him from behind. I think Ebner, his role with the Patriots in the first few years will be primarily special teams. I don't know how his coverage is exactly. He definitely won't be a corner. He'll be uh, mm -hmm. more of a safety. But, I'd, again, you know, his coverage might be a little questionable. Um, but I think if we throw him in a zone defense where he is just a, a part of the field he has to watch over, I think that's where he'd thrive the best. And, uh, you know, he has the speed to make up for anything missed. I think, you know, what I said a couple seconds ago was on special teams. Um, this With his rugby background, he is perfect for kickoff. Uh, you know, running down the field, staying in your lane, you know, catching the guy with the ball, you know, he he can avoid the blocks, and, you know, I, I think he'll be a force to reckon with on that pickoff team. And maybe even return a return game we'll see from him, you know, running a 4-4-8, four, 4-4-7 four, uh, four, four, at the combine, actually, and it'd be I'd be interested to see how we use him. Uh, I like uh, Nate. 
Uh, I think he has a lot of potential. He had a very good rugby career. He didn't get as much playing time when he joined the football team there, but I think his lack of stats does not matter. I think you'll just this is this is a draft for this is a draft for the Patriots. So the lack of stats is no big deal. We got mm-hmm. players with the skills to and potential on, and potential. But uh, yeah, I hope Nate Ebner has a good career. I, uh, I can see him starting up on special teams, like you said. But we'll see. Uh, we got a seventh round from our uh, second round pick that we traded away, and we pick up Alfonso Denard, a cornerback from Nebraska. It's a very interesting pick. I think uh, I was seeing early in the year Alfonso Denard was a first round pick, uh, maybe early second round, going to a team like the Lions in that area. Um, you know, really good skills. Played in uh, two different leagues with the the uh, conference switch in the NCAA, uh, faced more of a passing league and then a, more of a, r- a primarily run league. And I think um, that uh, he has seen both worlds, and he'll be a very solid contributor. He moved down because of assaulting a police officer, but, you know, Bill Belichick has his history of developing guys like that. And I think Alfonso will either be a starter next year, um, maybe this year if someone goes down on an injury, uh, but I think this year what we'll see is uh, maybe using him as the third nickel type of cornerback, being in there for more of a, like a shotgun set from the offense that we're seeing. Yeah, and talking about value for where they're picked, I think Alfonso tops every player we draft. He was a first-round talent, like you said, had that accident. But I, I love him, even though he beat up a cop. It's kind of pathetic. But uh, I could uh, see him getting some playing time. Uh He'll probably be uh, competing for corner spots with uh, Cal Arrington, uh, Roger Dolan. But um, I like Denard. Mm. Uh, I hope he gets some uh, solid. I hope he plays, yeah. The thing is, w- with his attitude problems, though, uh, w- as everyone knows, there's a certain way you got to live in New England, and that's the Patriot way. And as you said, after the draft, he kind of seems like he has that mental attitude, what she's trying to get back from that accident he did. And I hope he can fit into yeah, the I system. Yeah, I saw a rev- uh, interview with him the other night, and he was saying um, he, he's acted very gentlemanlike, and he was very positive about during the Patriots. There was no attitude. He was, he, you know, he responded. The question was, um, what do you want New England fans to know about you? And he responded with, um, I'm going to work hard every single play, 100%. I never take plays off. And I really like that about this guy. You know, he's coming in positive, ready to work. With our second seven-round pick, um, also acquired from our trade with Green Bay, um, number pick number 28 in the round, Jeremy Ebert, wide receiver from Northwestern. Uh, I, I like Jeremy Ebert. He has a good physical body. We have had success drafting in late rounds. We have a very deep receiving core, acquiring Brandon Lloyd, uh, Anthony Gonzalez. I, I have trouble seeing him. Getting a lot of playing time, I think he'll produce more than uh, Ocho Cinco did last year. But I think if Bill Belichick saw something in him when we needed to address the defense, I think he has some potential, but we just need to see in the future what type of opportunities he's getting. I think he'll start off on the practice squad this year. You know, we have so much depth in that wide receiving core, and they're already talking about cutting one of the big three um between Gonzalez, Chad Ochocinco, and um, uh, Dante Stallworth. They're saying one of them will get cut. So I, I find a very ch- – this guy's got to perform out of his mind if he wants to make the roster on opening day. But like I said, he'll be a practice squad guy, maybe come up a few times to win those injuries. But I'm not, I, I don't see much coming out of him. No. Well, there is a tape of him uh, against uh, – it was against Tavon Wilson in Illinois. And uh, – Jeremy had a very, very good game. He, It's one of the few tapes you could find of him, but he, he has a good ability to get some high catch balls, uh, put his hands up, throw his body up in the air, and try to catch things that are pretty difficult. I think his uh, fate is very determined by his special teams performance. Any other thoughts? No, I think we covered it, covered it pretty well.